can, can cut that out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how I started was in fact with the, the moon landings in, in, in the 60s tells you immediately how old I am. But uh, that's how it starts with the interest of uh, the moon landings, getting up uh, as a little boy uh, when the moon landings were there. But then in 75 I picked it up in fact more in, in the astronomy part where I started to build a, a telescope making my own mirror 15 centimeters uh, uh, wide so when you start building your own telescope which is quite interesting doing your own calculations also the following mechanism or that and that's how it starts and then you start working getting money you have to do something with your money and uh, I liked traveling anyway and then you travel to, to, to countries like Kenya, Kazakhstan which was the former Soviet Union at that time. Can you imagine you tra start traveling to those kind of things and then traveling on, on my own as well like uh, uh, Indonesia, Philippines or whatever and you travel to all solar eclipses and solar eclipses is something where it brings you to countries where you normally won't go. Uruguay, who goes on holiday in Uruguay for instance. But then you start to pick as well your places it's not just where it is the best place to observe the solar eclipse and we travel to solar uh, solar eclipse like total and or partial but it is as well uh, you start to pick where have I not been yet and which is a more interesting country if you can pick for instance uh, uh, between um, Argentina Brazil Uruguay I went to Uruguay because that was more interesting for me um, than the, the same with other areas and um, so you have eclipses quite often anyway and at least once a year because there's two solar eclipses a year uh, or it is partial or it is annular or it is total so you can travel already quite a bit and uh, which is nice if the money is there if the time is there the holiday so my boss knows exactly in 10 years time where I'm gonna be and he can't plan anything else because he knows that I'm gonna be on holiday the same for this year October well there is an eclipse but there's no central eclipse so we organize as well uh, conferences for uh, professionals and for amateurs with this year it is in Sacramento Peak Observatory uh, New Mexico because we have a lot of uh, professionals and a lot of amateurs together about 130 people are so far now uh, registered and there is a lot of professionals China Pakistan India America Russia as even people from Hawaii from Tahiti uh, are there and and will have uh, some presentations and and lectures some are more professional orientated about solar physics and some are more about the, the light traveling of solar eclipses but it is a, a nice way to travel and it is a, an ideal hobby and it keeps me bu busy because it is a combination of nature a combination of travel which we like you have to go on holiday anyway and it is as well a combination of science where I do science from the ancient time where I, I manage uh, a solar eclipse calendar where I do calculations of when was that last eclipse somewhere and uh, as well uh, the future where are we gonna be like next year is a total solar eclipse in March in Svalbard Spitsbergen minus 30 degrees quite cold it's one of the coldest I've been because Siberia I've been before and also Spitsbergen before which was also quite cold but it's quite interesting and then we look at what equipment we can take with us or what project we can do if we would like to do a project so that's a more or less in a nutshell so this is our biggest baby here uh, there's no name for it but uh, although it is called mates but it is a 20 centimeters Schmidt Cassegram where we have uh, the optical system you can put a, a, a solar filter in front of it where you can only observe the uh, sunspots uh, with uh, the other telescope on the outside it's a portable one where uh, you can observe as well solar surfaces and, and prominences and solar flames with it uh, but uh, this uh, telescope uh, you can uh, see the moon and the moon craters and the moon mountains uh, with it also the, the ring of Jupiter uh, the rings of uh, Saturn of course and a lot of details on Jupiter as well so um, it is a, a very nice and, and handy telescope and um, uh, you, you can see quite uh, a bit with it uh, and it is uh, mounted on a, a mount which is completely GPS uh, uh, driven because uh, you can just uh, calibrate it and once it is calibrated you just enter and there's about 140,000 different objects you said okay I want to see Jupiter it goes automatically to Jupiter and you can observe uh, the whole evening Jupiter or you can put the top 10 best uh, items in there and it goes uh, uh, sequential in fact to each item what to observe 
Uh, those uh, kind of gear is uh, not expensive uh, anymore. Um, it's quite uh, accessible for, for many amateurs and even this one at 20 centimeters is already quite small for uh, a, a good uh, amateur uh, while well, professionals uh, not even talking about they have uh, bigger telescopes. That's in a nutshell this telescope.